This video is about laying curved points and super elevation. So let's see how we get on. Hi, I'm Charlie and welcome back to Chadwick Model Railway. Before I start, I'd like to give a quick shout out. I went to a model railway show in Wells on Saturday and met up with two guys called David and Peter. They introduced themselves and said that they, uh, they watch this channel. So thanks very much and thanks for coming over and introducing yourselves. So where am I now? Um, this is board three. Hopefully you saw the last video and there may be a link up here if you're watching on the YouTube channel of how I laid the track on board two. So that's one and two are almost complete. And this is board three, the one that sits in the corner. These boards I've kind of recycled. They didn't want to scrap them and start again. So what I tend to do is I bring the boards out before I fit them to the wall, tip them on on their ends so I can fit all the point motors and do most of the heavy work underneath before they're stuck on, uh, on the wall and bolted together. So that's my idea. With cork, I use um, 16th of an inch cork and I lay it across the whole area so that I'm not uh, restricted by where I put the cork if I need to change my plans. So the cork goes down over the whole area, then I lay the track. Once I'm happy with the track and I'm ready to ballast, um, then I will remove the cork to give me the edges for the ballast shoulder. So that's my theory behind that. In the last video, um, there were a couple of suggestions, let's say, and one of them was to use copy decks. The video was about whether you should pin or glue track, and as it turns out, kind of doing a bit of both works best. And it was suggested that I try using copy decks. So, um, from eBay, the, the well-known auction site, I bought myself some, uh, some copy decks, and I'll be using it in this video to see how we get on. It was also suggested about my uh, soldering. I tend to use a lead-free solder. Um, but someone suggested that that might not be the best way of doing it. Hey, I'm, I'm here to listen, I'll take advice. So I bought myself some tin lead uh, copper uh, solder with a, a flux resin core. So I'll try that later on and I'll let you know how I get on. So where do we go from here? So to go from these five tracks here and then through down to the other end where it's just two tracks, clearly I need three points. So, how am I gonna do it? Well, I have some uh, right hand curved points. So what I thought I would do is, there's nothing underneath here ready for the point motor, so it needs to go about there. So this being the up line, this will be the up line fast, and these two here, that will go to platform three, which is this line, and this one go to platform two, which is this one. So that kind of makes sense. And with a couple of bits of track that I've kind of sized up, that will be the, the kind of take on there. And for the next line, will fit kind of like that. And then there's obviously the fast track, which will go through, and that will come off that one there and then make its way to the other end. So what I thought I would do is firstly, I'll install these three lines here. And then once they're in place, I'll then do the other two line, uh, the other line, which is the down line um, with another curved point. Um, but I'll, I'll figure out how much room is left once these are in place. So I'll try and keep these lines um, the radius as large as possible and then with what's left I'll sort out the line coming off platform one into here and then the fast down which comes into here and then these tracks will obviously then go on to the next board. Hopefully that all makes sense. What I'd also like to do is I'd like to super elevate the curves so which means tipping the track slightly so that you get a, a kind of a more realistic look of the train as it comes off um, comes out of the bend so it will be tilted and what I intend to use for that is is this ordinary plastic card and this is one mil plastic card so I will just run a section all the way along uh, the outside edge of the rail and it will give a slight camber and hopefully that will look quite good. So that's the basis of what I'm up to. The first thing I'm going to do is modify um, these points and the modification to these Pico Electro Frog points is you simply cut the wires that connect those two rails together and you bond those two rails and those two rails together 
and then you have a dropper coming off down to the track. Now I do emphasize that there's nothing wrong with the points as they come out of the box whatsoever. They work perfectly well, but if you want to enhance their long-term running ability, then this is what I would advise you to do. When you weather the track, the electrical continuity between the blades can become somewhat worn. So by bonding these rails together, you're not relying on power being uh, transferred from the uh, stock rail to the switch rail. So that's kind of the, the idea behind it. So I shall modify these points and, uh, and then crack on. So here's my point ready to go. So first thing I need to do is to cut or at least break those connections um, between those rails, which is no big shakes. And the other one. Okay. So that's those connections broken. So moving on to these, um, these rails here that need to be bonded together, all I do with a little bit of emery cloth is I just give them a little bit of a polish to make sure there's no lacquer whatsoever on those rails. That's us good to go. Here's this solder I mentioned that I bought. I bought it, bought it from Eileen's Emporium at the Model Railway show that I mentioned earlier where I met um, David and Peter. And this is 6040 uh, resin core solder. Um, and it's a, I think it's 60 tin and 40 lead. It's of course containing lead you must be aware of the uh, uh, that it is actually toxic, and so not to not to breathe in the fumes from the um, from the solder. So I just tin both the red and the black cables. So I should try to tin the rail. Like so. And then um, with my black outer loop cable, Drop more solder on the tip. Keep my head well away from the, uh, the fumes that are coming off the solder. Give it time for the solder to set. And that's the inside one. Hopefully you can see. So I give that a good tug before I do the outside one. If you do the outside one first, it's hard to, re to, to be sure that you've actually got a good bond on the inside one, if that makes sense. So then onto the outside rail. Yep, a good, good, uh, a good strong bond. And then once this is in place, you should be very difficult to see uh, any solder. So that's the outside one done, which is black. Then there's the inside one. Like 
I think credit where credit's due, I think this solder is a little bit easier to use than the lead-free that I've been using, but then again it has its drawbacks about the toxicity of it. That's the inside one. Give it time to chill. Good turb, yep, yeah, that's on to stay. And then the outside one. And that's on there as well. Okay, so they're good to go. The only other thing I need to do, of course, is to um, put a dropper onto the uh, the frog. And as you, I'm sure you're aware, um, you know that I always use green dropper wires for the frogs, so I have consistency across the layout. Anyway, so that's that one done. All I should do now is just quickly um, do the same to the other three points. Now, as I'm using tortoise points, the next thing to do is to remove the spring. And that's located just here. So all I use is a pair of snips. And give it a little tug. And whip it out. And then the point the action just moves without the spring involved. So I've put in place the, the, uh, the two curved points and the bit of flexi track that will take me around to the line that leads up to platform three. So this is where I think I need the, uh, the points. I've checked underneath and we are kind of good to go. And uh, there's nothing underneath to stop it. So what I need to do now is to mark out where to drill the holes um, for the point rods to come through. Now, if you don't intend to fit point motors, I would still drill the holes because if you change your mind later, at least then it's much easier to install. But to try to drill a hole through from underneath um, whilst the point is in place would be an absolute nightmare. So all I use for this now is a couple of these Pico, um, what is it, SL14 um, track pins and all I do is pop them into the center of the hole. So I put the point blades in the central position, pop the pin into the hole, give it a tap, to mark out where I need to um, draw the hole, and the same on the, the other point. Now these Pico track pins are quite useful because the heads of the pins actually fit straight through the holes um, of, the, uh, of the locating lugs on the points. So there, there are my pins and I can move these out of the way and now I can drill the holes down into the baseboards um, ready for the, um, for the armature of the, of the point motor to come up. So with the board on its end, now you can see the two tortoise point motors that are mounted underneath. And then all we do is lower the points over the top of the tortoise motor armatures. Put those in the right place. Try to get those central. And then all we need to do really is mark off the, on the baseboard, where we need to drill the holes for these cables to go. Not forgetting the the frogs. Well that's those two points in place. All I need to do now is to pin this down and then get the next piece of track and then feed that out up to uh, the next section. and then that will be the outside line that goes to uh, platform three complete. Now I mentioned earlier about angling the track so that the trains would naturally come round at an angle just as they do on the prototype. 
So here we are with this piece of track in place and I've yet to drill the hole for these droppers to go through. I fitted fish plates across the points, not only um, for DCC on the, on the frog, but also on the outside rails because it will end up being computer controlled and therefore um, it needs complete isolation when it goes into blocks. So I need to now fit these one millimeter little bits of plastic card on the outside uh, to give the, the, uh, the rail the tip. And I've got a few half millimeter pieces just to pick, up, pick it up as it starts to uh, go into the bank. So how am I gonna do that? Well, I think that's quite simple. I think all I need to do really is to mark where the curve will be on the inside of the fish plates and therefore I can figure out exactly where to glue down these little bits of plastic card. So if I lift back out this piece of rail and you can see the dotted line and that's where I'm going to stick down my little bits of plastic card like so. And at the start of it I'll obviously put these um, one millimetre pieces just to bring it out uh, so to a more gradual incline. So I'll glue that down, um, drill the hole, pop that through and then get back to you. So refitting the track, there's the um, there's the plastic card in place. So if I refit this piece of track at this end, pull the cables through, refit at this end, I just push those in, just check those fish plates first. Yep, we're good, and the angle's good, the curve's good, there's no dog leg. Um, and some of these just poke out the other side, so I'll just push those in a little bit. And we're good to go. So now what we need to do is obviously secure this track, and for this I thought I'd try um, the copy decks, as I'd never tried it before. Uh, and someone had recommended it, so that's what we'll have a go at. Well, I've never used it before, but on the back of it, it says how to use and for non-porous surfaces such as plastics, um, apply evenly to each surface to be bonded, allow to dry until it becomes touch dry 15 to 20 minutes, and then bring them firmly together. It doesn't say shake it at all, but um, well, you never know. Let's have a little look. I imagine on the other end of this, there'll be some kind of a brush. And yes, there is. And someone said to me, it smells of fish. Ooh, yes, it does. <laughs> right, so I shall pop the glue on top of this elevated section on top of these, um, the plastic card. Because that's obviously the bit it's going to stick to on the outside of the rail. I found this stuff hard to, hard to come by. Um, I tried to get it on eBay. Um, well, sorry, no, I, I eventually got it on eBay. I tried B&Q, they're no longer stocking it. Um, uh, Amazon was more expensive simply because of the postage. Um, but obviously there's a few commercial sellers on eBay selling it. Uh, so that's where I got it from in the end. Anyway, I think that's probably enough. So I'll leave that there to go off 15 to 20 minutes time and I'll get back to you. So 20 minutes has gone by and it is a little more kind of tacky. It's not gone off, it's not solid or anything, so I shall pop that in there. Pop those fish plates in there, pull those cables down again. Where are we? and hopefully this should kind of stick into place. As you can see, it wasn't such a good guess, was it, with my, uh, with where I thought the track would be. But hey, now the main thing is that there's no dog legs in this track. And we're looking good. 
and it seems to have held it straight away. So what I shall do next is just pop a few books on here just to give it a bit of weight and see how how sort of see how it bonds. So it's had a chance to dry. There is a little bit of movement but I thought what I would come and do now is just mop up the extra glue The uh, if there's a bit too much there. Not that it will make any difference when the ballast is carried out but uh, you know you don't want too much there. It's been held in quite firmly. I don't think the copy duct has quite gone off yet but uh, it's, it's obviously got enough grip on it. So what I'll try and do now is reconfigure the camera so you can see the angle of this. Okay, I've just checked to make sure this board is level. And it is. And if I run a coach now along this piece of track, hopefully you can see the difference the angle makes. And then as it comes down a little further, it will drop into the um, the half mill section and then back onto the flat. And I think that's quite a good little angle. It gives the, uh, the layout kind of a more of a prototypical feel. Well, I think that just about wraps this video up. As uh, Just to repeat the, uh, the same process on the other tracks, there's not really that much point. Um, it's going to be exactly the same repeated time and time again. Well, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Um, I'm not really a lover of curved points, but I really needed to use those two points in that section um, to manage to get the, the curve around on this one board um, so it makes it out onto the station area. Um, please don't think that I'm an expert modeler. I just kind of do it the way I feel is good. And today has been um, not, without mis well, not without a mistake, but... Um, when I drilled through the, to put the cables through for those, um, those two curved points, um, I missed the, one of those tortoise point motors by about two millimetres. So clearly there are, there are other things to consider before you go mad with your power drill. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed this video and if you did then please like and subscribe. And there's also a little bell icon if you're watching on YouTube so you get a, a, um, a notification when my next video comes out, which hopefully should be in a fortnight. Of course, in the meantime now I've got a great deal of wiring to do and to lay the rest of this track um, before I can take it to a stage further. Anyway, in the meantime if you'd like to subscribe and there may be a video um, here and here for you to watch next and in the meantime have a great time, take care, I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot and bye bye.